Yeah, well, listen, for um, sure. Laverne Clark is ready to go. Um, so what I'm going to do is make sure that I got the right number in my switchboard here, and I think I do. Oh, let's just hope and pray that this is it. Because if not, we'll be calling somebody that we don't know. Oh, and anyway, ring, ring, ring. Go That'd be fun. Charlie. fun. Ding, ding, ding goes the bell. Goes the bell. Hello? Hey, Laverne, what the hell's happening, brother? Oh, nothing much. What's up, man? Oh, man, this is Big Perm. We're just uh, hanging out here We're with my uh, my co-host, Dave the Butcher Clifford. We're just kicking the shit, man. Talking to some uh, interesting folks and uh, rapping about the MMA world. Um, Dave, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'd like to welcome Mr. Uh, Fist of Fury to the show. Uh, This is Dave the Butcher. Thank you for uh, coming out with us tonight, sir. How you doing? How you doing there? I'm doing pretty damn good. And, uh, boy, where do I start, man? You are an OG when it comes to this. I believe, now, I don't know how accurate all the different logs are, but on all the the websites that I looked at to look at your lengthy track record of fights, your first fight was a victory over Mr. International? Yeah, Sony Carter. Sony Carter? Yeah, yeah, Yeah. Sony Carter. You beat Sony Carter's ass in 1997 in Iowa, man. That is is awesome. I I know I've, I've kicked it with him a couple of times out there. He used to showed up at a few events that I was working, and that's pretty cool, man. I'm once you got, yeah, tell it, us what it's, it was, what it's like to be an OG like that. Well, you know, it was sad that I had to beat Tony Carter, but but um, he ended up being a good friend of mine afterwards, you know. And you know, we we, uh-huh. we fight, you know, we become good friends, and we learn a lot and pass it on, you know. Absolutely. Well, and, and and Laverne, as I look at your record here, man, I mean, starting with Shoney, you know, going on down the line, you know, as the years passed. Top notch competition, you know everybody from Dave Monet, Fabiano Iha, uh, Matt Hughes, and that's a fight I want to talk to you about in a second. Whoa! Uh, John Lewis, uh, shoot, Chat Lavender, Frank Trigg, Chris Lytle, Mac Danzig, Daiju Takase. I mean, George Sani, Melvin. Gal- I could go on. You you fought the best, some of some of the best in the world, man. But the fight with uh, Matt Hughes. Um, that was back at Extreme Challenge 29 back uh, – it was up in Wisconsin back in 99. You lost that fight, and there was – I know there was uh, something about that fight that uh, has kind of stuck in your craw over the years. Why don't you tell us about that? Oh, it was a little controversy about it, uh, but I take nothing from the fight, you know. I mean, he won the fight hands down to him, you know. Can't take nothing from it, you know. And, and, uh, um, yeah, he, um, I fought, I fought, um, three fights that night, you know, I fought three times to get to the finals, and I actually lost before I got to the finals against Dave Monet. I, I got put in the, um, guillotine, but I hurt Dave Monet, so he couldn't go on to the finals, so I ended up taking his position, and that's how I fought Matt in the finals. I, I really wasn't originally supposed to be in the finals. But he only fought one person, you know, and the guy only, he didn't give him that much of a fight, so he was pretty fresh for the night, you know. Yeah. So here you are for fight number three, coming in and fighting the guy who's been in there maybe two minutes all night long. Exactly. Well, you know, this guy went out to beat. Yeah, go ahead. The, the fights I fought was the two fights of life, you know, hardest fights I ever fought, you know. I can remember him in May, you know. Dave Monet, and I forget the other guy, but it was a pretty hard fight. Well, Dave oh, Monet, I mean. Fernandez. Oh, okay. Huh? It was C.J. Fernandez. Oh, C.J. Fernandez and Dave Monet. Yeah, I know I just had a whole, I had a rough night, I know that. <laughs> it sounds like it. Those guys are both tough as nails. Yeah, yeah, Dave Monet, he's one of the toughest fighters I ever fought. And uh, Matt Hughes is one of the strongest fighters that ever smart fought. Well, now Laverne, where where are you living at today? Where you where are you at today? You still training and act? You know, I know there was a guy that sent me a message earlier today um, that I forwarded to you. Uh, had a fight for you, so I mean, obviously you're still training. Where are you at nowadays? 
I'm I'm training everywhere. You can see me on Facebook. You see I'm all I'm I'm I I'm associated with gyms in Missouri, Indianapolis, Chicago, all over the United States, you know. I'm pretty much welcome to be training anywhere. So you never know where you're gonna see me at. I like to I like to get different, you know, aspects of the of you know, from different gyms. So I mean I'm I'm I've been in the game so long now and I, I feel like I can just go anywhere and train, you know. Well, you can. There's no way you couldn't. I mean, you, you're one of the first people to, I mean, in 97 is really early, and and that was like really the dawn of the new age of the different rules. You know, you we were one of the last people to have to fight in one of those three-man tournaments, really, you know, because once, once the UFC kind of took over, and now that Bellator, they run their tournaments over a whole season. So, I mean, really, what do you think, uh, do you think uh, that, People back then were more hardcore. I mean, I know you mentioned Dave Manet as far as being your toughest fight, and he's a previous guest to the show, and he's he sounds like it, man. And the fights I've lost to his, I mean, he, of course, he was the first UFC middleweight champ. So, I mean, you're right in the mix with the greats of all time right there. How's that feel? I mean, what do you, what do you take away from that? Well, you know, it was an experience, you know. I mean, I, I learned a lot from it, and, I mean, you know, what I – what I take away from is everything I learned from, and I mean, I um I have a lot a lot of knowledge of the game now. I mean, and I can pass it on to 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 up and coming young fighters, you know. So that's what I'm doing right now. I just kind of, you know, learning still, and I'm still competing, but I um uh, kind of pass on what I know to to certain individuals, you know, to help their game and help them pass and go move on, you know. Uh, um, in their career. Well, that that brings me uh, right to the question that Jeremy usually asks everybody: Is we got a lot of amateur and up and coming guys that are just about ready to turn pro, and right in the area there in Illinois and Iowa. What kind of advice would you have to somebody that might be listening that's an amateur getting ready to turn pro? What would you What would you tell them? Well, since I've been in the game and it's for real. And I know the, I know the, how to be a champion, you know. I know what it takes to be a champion. That's one thing I can't answer. And it's rule one, you know, you just you got to be focused, you know. Be focused on it, you know. Run every day, you know. Eat the right foods. Don't drink. No no alcohol, no, no drugs, you know. And you might want to um, wait to get married, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, play. I know what you're saying there. I'm just an announcer, and I know that rule. <laughs> but you, you might want to just give your all, you know, be the best you can be, you know. Uh, give it all all what you got in it, you know, and don't take it for granted one second, you know. I mean, that's the best advice I can tell any up-and-coming fighter, you know. That's the ticket. Whoever put in the hardest work, that's going, who's going to win the fight. Well, and you really do no, notice that the amount of time that someone spends, the less time that you see them messing around, the more focused they are and the better they do and the quicker that they move up through the ranks. And, and, and if you look at, we were just talking about this with our previous guest. We had Jim Arvanitas on here, the pancreation guy. And uh, we were talking about that, how, you know, now if you look at all the champions, of, you know, like UFC, Bellator, different leagues like that. It's always the honorable and dedicated fighter, you know, the guy that just, that's what he does. Every day, all day, that's what he does. And those are the guys that win titles, you know, and that's, that's he hits the nail. The winners. The winners. winners. It's easy. It's, it, you, you ask what it takes to be a champion, that's what it takes, you know, on the grind like all the time, you know, every day, yep. you know. Every I'll day. tell you what, and, and, and that, like, hearkening right back to Shoney, you know, the, like, it's kind of cool that that's, that was your first fight, man, because, like, he came down to the Coliseum, and I'm sure you know what the Coliseum is down in Detroit there, and that was his favorite spot. We had some fights up in there. <clears throat> I, I didn't yeah. even know who I was fighting. When I first fought Shoney, I didn't know who I was fighting, but I was ready. I was, man, I'm telling you, I was fired up. You know, yeah, I was I was awesome. ready for anybody at that time. I, I mean, it was a surprise that I was fighting Shoney, but um, 
uh, I didn't realize who I, uh, who I fought until after the fight. But, you know, it probably would have happened to anybody at that time, man, because I was ready. You know, I, I've done everything right, you know. So. Mm-hmm. And now, as far as your style goes, I'm sure it's evolved over the, geez, I mean, 15 years, are we saying here, that you've been fighting now easily? Um, you're primarily, I, I know that you've done some pro boxing, too, so are you primarily a striker? What got you into this? How did you find your way into MMA and back then in 97? Well, man, I used to, I wrestled, I wrestled all my grade school years, junior high and high school years. And, uh, you know, I, I won a lot in wrestling, you know. And I, um, but I used to wrestle these guys, and sometimes I have a tough match with the guy. The guy roughed me up some. I wanted to punch the guy. I ain't punch the guy <laughs> while you wrestling. So, and then, and, and then, so after wrestling was over after high school, so I, I joined boxing, you know. And so, you know, you, the guy hits you in the face real good. You want to slam this guy on his head, but you can't. Cause it's boxing, so MMA came up. Oh, that was right on time for me. You know, it was just it was built for me. You know. It yeah, that's awesome. My arena. You know. Well, in your division, your division is the toughest of all of them. I mean, you look at it. Really, over the years, the best fighters really come out of that 185 pound division, man. I mean, and you fought most of them. Yeah, I mean, and I've been blessed. I ain't been hurt. Now, 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 you know, like, if, if you get you one in it, I mean, I'll be the champ. If you get you one in the game, but, you know, that's another thing. That's, another thing. that's, why, that's why it's here, though, you know. It sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I love it, though. I love this sport, man, because, you know, you, it never stops evolving, you know. It's, yeah. It's, just, it's a great thing, you know. It ain't going to get bored no time soon. No, no. And one of the things that I really admire about you, just getting to talk to you now, you know, after the only thing I've done is research you and check it out, you know, so getting to talk to you now, I really dig how you got a really good personality and, uh, you know, you've dealt with, you know, a lot of the big fights, you've came real close and then you'll lose a fight. Now, I don't mind talking about that because that's the biggest part of the game to me is how a person handles losing a fight because if you lose a fight to a guy who's just as good as you or ends up being, oh, let's say a UFC Hall of Famer that beats Hoist Gracie, there's really no loss in a fight like that. No, how do you approach a fight like that? Because a lot of these fights have got to be where you're just like, man, I got nothing to lose. This dude's, this is Dave Manet, man, or this is Jake Ellenberger. You know, I got nothing to lose. How, what do you do when you, when you get in there? How do you approach a fight like that? Well, I, I go in, you know, I, I'm going to give it all. You know, I know that. I'm going to the end. I already know that I'm going as far as I'm, I can go. But mm-hmm. fortunately, you know when you go in the fight, before you go in the fight, the possibilities. Um, what you do before you go in that ring it determines if you're going to win or not, you know. You know, everything you do before. So when I'm in a fight like that, I didn't did my research and everything. I know the possibility of, I mean, where I can lose at, uh, um, pretty much the time I can lose in the fight. If if it's mm-hmm. possible, if I, you know, don't detonate what I'm going to do, you know. So, I mean, you know, you just take it as it comes. Well, guys, I just want to jump no in matter here, who it is. Gears, yeah. shift gears yeah. real quick. Um, huh? I just oh, wanted to jump in and shift gears real quick. Um, this weekend is uh, UFC 152. Uh, we got John Jones taking on Vitor Belfort. And Laverne, I just wanted to get your opinion on you know John Jones and the whole controversy with UFC 151 being canceled, and you know what your thoughts are on on the UFC and and, and all that mess that's going on over there right now. Well, I don't know, man. About I, I would like to be back in the UFC. I don't know why they call me back up in there. I got a good record, <laughs> well, five, four and one. You know, yeah, I mean, I and the guy who beat me, and the guy who beat me, I beat him first, and they didn't even have us have a rematch. I mean, you know, I, I want to fight back. That's when I will fight the best when I'm when I'm when you know in prime time. You know, when it's time for the fight. When you know at the top show, that's when I will fight the best. You know, so and I agree. I, I want to see that. 
I want to see it. If Vitor Belfort can come back, why the hell can't you, man? I want to see if it's true. If you're listening right now, any of you people listening right now, put this man out to fight. All right. It's a good fight to have. It's Matt Hughes, me and Matt Hughes, you know, because, I mean, I never, I mean, I respect Matt Hughes and everything. He know that. He's a good friend of mine. But he know I don't feel that, you know, that went down the correct way, you know. And then, you know, he's went on and did good things with his career. I mean, it's not over with yet, you know. But so you got something for him, don't you? Yeah, yeah, let's make that happen, you know. Anybody yeah, out there like want to see that. that happen, make that happen. Uh, even if that don't happen, get me back in the UFC and you're going to have a, you see a good show anyway. You know? However I agree. Go. I agree. And that division right now, I mean, it's, it is the most competitive, but they need some of that, man. I, I don't see why not. There's no reason. There's no reason you and can't I be have, all those I have evolved. I have to say now, you know, even from my, la- my last loss, you know, I've been in the gym. Uh, you know, I've been on the grind. I've been evolving, really taking the time out with jujitsu. you know. So, I mean, it, it might be exciting to see me fight again, you know. Well, what do you uh, – I have to – Do you have to get a couple of wins, and then have you talked to these guys? Because I know uh, my homeboy, James Lee, I don't know if you know you – know, you know James from Detroit? Yeah, him and Yeah, him and Shoney are boys. James knows everybody. He fights uh, – he fought in pride, and he's trying to get back in the UFC, and they told him to get a couple wins, and he's going to go fight at 205, so – I imagine all you got to do is go out there and get a couple wins, go fight for, uh, and like like Perm said, you're going to get yourself a, a pro fight off uh, somebody he puts you in contact with. Get yourself uh, rigged up with a, you know, not even, you know, but get yourself hooked up, go in there and kick a couple people's asses and then holler at them because they need you. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'll be there. I'm, going, I'm, I'm not letting it go until I get back in there, you know, because I, I deserve to be back in there. I haven't, I, I, I gave my life just, this, I gave this sport my life, you know, so, I mean, I mean, I should be able to finish strong, you know, I mean, you know, I'm, that's well, what I'm trying to do. I mean, one of the things that you're a part of is there's a large group of guys right now that are at your level. They started early, and they've been evolving. They may not have won all the time, but they're right around the same age, and there's a market for it, man. There's no reason that there shouldn't be some fights going on. And like, I'd like to see you versus Matt Hughes somewhere. And I know some people that could put some shit like that together, dude. You know what I mean? I'm going to try to holler at it. I can't promise you nothing. I'm not trying to say anything. But, you know, right. I'd like to see that as a fan. Well, and that's well, how... well, 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 really, really, man, he's he, he the one that needs to make sure that happen, too, because we talked about it, and he's supposed to make sure that happened. You know, so we on the air, ain't no, ain't no ducking and diving, you know. He's supposed yeah. to, you know, make do what you say and say what you do. So yeah, that'll be hopefully sweet. that can happen. Now, are you, still, uh, are you still based out of Militich? You still in Illinois, bro? Well, I'm, I'm considered as always a part of Militich. I'm always considered as, uh, as associated with Militich. But I, I've been I've been um, training up at um, Team Destruction out of um, Farmington, Missouri, up there. Got some good kids up there. You Is know, that Destruction MMA? Young, Is that Joe Worden? Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, had Joe, Joe on the Ward. show a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, he got some. He got some really, some really nice kids. Actually, he's gonna have some champions come out of there. You, you, you'll be, you'll be surprised when you see. You know. Well, I think the mid- well, guys, that's our two minute warning. We got about two minutes left with Laverne tonight. Um, one question, Laverne. We always ask, or at least try to always ask, um, if there was tag team MMA in the UFC today. What four fighters would you throw in there? You know, what two teams would you have go against each other? What, what two team? What you mean? Two two on two? Yeah, yep. like if there was tag team MMA, like tag team wrestling, but in MMA. Uh huh. Who would you put in there? I like have, two I, me and John Jones would whoop them all. <laughs> yeah. Me and, yeah. Me and John That's Jones out there, boy. You get me out there with John Jones, and I get the training right. I will whoop them all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and th- somebody asked me what, what's my thought about what's going to happen, man. I think John Jones is going to um, whoop, whoop everybody in the next four or five years, you know what I'm saying, until he get a little I tired. Do too. Or, 
you know, bored with it or something, you know. If he slip up and take it for granted, somebody going to this, – this sports is evolving so so fast and so much. I mean, somebody going to jump right in on it, but I don't see that happening no time soon. So don't expect to see it happen either. No, I don't think so. I think you're right, about four or five years and, and ain't nobody going to touch him. I'd like to see him fight Silva before Silva gets too old. In what way is John Jones exactly? 205. I, I don't think he can get much lower, really, because look how skinny he's got. Yeah, you know? It doesn't matter really what way. That's a mini Superman. That's a mini yeah, Superman. Yeah. He's, stronger than, he, he, he's, he's stronger than the average Joe. Believe that. He got some heart, too. I like that cat. Well, hey, I actually know a dude. Left. I actually know a dude that probably can give him some 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 go, but he don't even fight. <laughs> his name is <laughs> Dana Burns. He played basketball, but this no, dude, sure. his this dude, this dude remind me of of John Jones. He, oh, he, he probably could. He, he probably can get him too. You know, I, I know his style. And I I've seen John Jones a lot, and I I know Dana Dana Burns. Mm-hmm. But I, I, you know, he don't fight, you know, so. Hey, Laverne, uh, yeah. we got about 30 seconds left, but how can people get in touch with you, man? Hey, man, um, my, my Facebook me, you know, my number, too, 292-1302, you know. Hey, and um, I'm out here, man. I'm at um, uh, Midwest um, 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 MMA, Midwest MMA here in the Quad Cities right now. And I'm all yeah. over, man. Uh, Sweet. Well, I announced. You, announce know fight, you know about some fights? Make it happen. Make that call. Text me. I'll something. hook it up. I'll hook yeah. it up. Yeah. Right on. Well, so I'm out here. Joining the show tonight, man. All right. Take care, brother. All right. We'll talk right. Soon. Yeah. Pleasure you to meet you. Thank you, Holmes. Yes, sir. Later. All right. One more time for those that want to get in touch with Laverne Clark. He put his phone number on blast, so I'll help him out. It's 309-292-1302. Or you can find Laverne Clark. It's L-A-V-E-R-N-E-C-L-A-R-K. Laverne Clark, you can find him on Facebook. I'll tell you what, give that man a fight. Any promoters out there, matchmakers, looking for a tough-ass 185-er that'll come in there. Give him a good fight. I want to see him fight Matt Hughes, dude. That's the one I want to see. Get Maltzberger on that. Come on, Chris. We know you're listening. Make it happen, dude. <laughs> <laughs> of course, our producer, you know, heads up, Blue, Blue Blood MMA, MMA. We can definitely look for big things coming from them early in uh, 2013. I want to give a big shout-out to him for helping us out and just giving a shit, man. He he takes care of us, bro. Without a doubt, you know, Chris.